Hey, I'm Randra Winchester and welcome back to my channel. And today is June 1st. It is officially Reading Women Month. You can now start the Reading Women Challenge. Go forth and read all of the things. I'm really excited about this month and one of the things I'm excited about is a bunch of different booktubers have volunteered to do recommendation videos on specific challenges. So they're picking a challenge and they're recommending a bunch of books that you could possibly read for that challenge. One of the reasons I picked this challenge is because I am the one that inspired it, sort of, and so did Flannery O'Connor, who is one of our favorite writers, and she had lupus and actually passed away from it. Um, I also have an autoimmune disease, so living this way is just in reading books, you want to see yourself in books, and I just don't. I don't see myself in many books at all, and I basically will accept anyone who has an autoimmune disease or it looks similar anything really um, because it's just very difficult to see your life especially on a daily basis portrayed in books so that is what kind of the inspiration behind why we wanted more people to read books like this is because usually when i tell people uh, more details about my health they want to know well what does that mean for you what does that look like and so if people had read a book where they knew what that looked like, I wouldn't be the one telling them that. And sometimes it can be very difficult to talk about the things you are faced with, especially if they're very intimate details. So that is why I'm going to be recommending some books today. And uh, I have several for you, and then I have a couple that are on my TBR. So the first thing I'm actually going to mention are two articles, and that's uh, one by Laura Hillenbrand about her experience with chronic fatigue syndrome. It's now recently been renamed. I'll put the new name in the description box. They renamed it because it's more medically descriptive. She wrote about her experience with chronic fatigue syndrome and how she spent a very long time trying to figure out what she had, and then people still don't often believe that chronic fatigue syndrome exists. I mean, with autoimmune diseases, and about 50 years ago, doctors didn't believe they exist. They just called them women being hysterical because most of the time it's women with autoimmune diseases. So anyway, she faced that and then when the, she was diagnosed, you know, she still, there's no cure for it. There's not really any treatment. So she just had to figure out what worked for her. Now she is recovering a bit more, but while she had chronic fatigue syndrome, she wrote two books, Unbroken and Sea Biscuit, and then she had an article written about her called The Unbreakable Hill and Brand. And I can't read that book without sobbing because that is my life. It is still the most beautiful piece of writing that I've ever seen my life in. So I'm going to recommend those articles. If you want to go check those out, they're gorgeous. And go support Laura Hill and Brand. I mean, not that she really needs it at this point because she's had two amazing movies and her both her books are bestsellers, but still, you know, we want to support, we want to support women writers. <laughs> those are the two articles I would recommend. Um, one one book I would recommend uh, that I've seen a lot of different TBRs is I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell. Maggie O'Farrell had an incident where she had a very uh, strange incident with her brain when she was a kid and she ended up almost becoming a vegetable and like paralyzed and, and working her way through physical therapy to being able to function again and the doctors considered it a miracle. And later she now cares for her daughter who has severe eczema and as well severe intense allergies where she can go to anaphylactic shock if she's even around certain things. And so she talks a lot about that in here. And when I read it, I sent my mom a copy and was like, mom, you need to read this because caring for me and my brother who also has uh, different health struggles, she has been a caregiver most of her life at this point, so she definitely related to this book. So if you're a caregiver, I definitely think you could also relate to this book um, and definitely see yourself in it. And I just thought this was beautiful because she also talks about some of the ways that she lives her life post this experience and how it changed her viewpoint. We also interviewed Maggie O'Farrell on the Reading Women podcast, so I will link that also well down below. But this is just a beautiful book and I cried and cried and cried when I read this and it was very very emotional experience but I would highly recommend it. One of the questions that we've had about the prompt is chronic illnesses aren't fatal are they? Well chronic illness is just a you know general umbrella term that means just an illness that lasts a very long time and that includes some forms of cancer um, like Nina Riggs had in The Bright Hour. She lived for many years knowing that she was dying and talked a lot about what it feels like to prepare when you know you're going to pass away. What do you want to tell your children? What do you want to prepare for your children? How are you going to live your life? What are you going to do with that? And for many people with chronic illnesses, they are, they do know they're going to be fatal. Like with Flannery O'Connor, she knew she would pass away from it because it was genetic in her family, ran in her family. She had seen that already. 
So I think this answers a lot of questions. It will ask a lot of questions and features a lot of different things that people with chronic illnesses have to face and prepare for. And I just really love this memoir. I thought it was very beautiful in the way that it described how a woman uh, deals with that kind of thing. And it's very specific to that state, um, especially with regarding your family and different things. So you'll definitely want to check out this memoir, The Bright Hour, um, A Memoir of Living and Dying by me, Nina Riggs. Another interview we had on the Reading Room podcast um, is Tell Me Everything You Don't Remember by Christine Hung Oak Lee. And this is a memoir about a woman who had a stroke in her early 30s. This was actually shortlisted for our prize, so this counts for two prompts, actually. And I really love this book. She kind of parallels it with um, Slaughterhouse-Five. And because she had a stroke and she didn't have a short-term memory, so she was she felt unstuck in time and how it jumped around. And the structure of the memoir mimics that. And as you go forward in the novel, I feel it stabilizes more as she recovers more. And if you follow her on Instagram, you'll see that she's still struggling with some things. She'll go back to her doctor and she'll realize that she's not as recovered as she thought she was and she's still forgetting things. And just knowing that your mind is not a safe place anymore, that it's not a place that you can you rely on is just really devastating. It just gives you a look at someone who's experienced something that's traditionally found in older people as a young person and a lot of people really found it hard to believe that she had this because strokes are for older people not for younger people but strokes happen to people of all ages so I just I was greatly moved by this memoir. I have so many tabs in it. It's it's just really beautiful. I, I couldn't recommend it enough. Now, some people have asked the question, now what about mental health? Mental health is a chronic illness. And yes, it is. We wanted to feature physical chronic illness and then also feature mental health next year in a different challenge so that you can specifically look for books that deal with each of those different things and the challenges that they face. They're both horrible, but oftentimes they both need people to be aware of certain differences in them. So one of the books I think is great for both of those actually is Let's Pretend This Never Happened, a mostly true memoir by Jenny Lawson. Jenny Lawson writes about how she struggles with both physical and mental chronic illness and how she handles both of those and how they interact together and also how they are different. And I really appreciate her approach to this because she's really funny. Like she's just laugh out loud funny. I listen to the audiobook especially. It's perfection. She reads it. I love her so much. I love how she raises awareness for these different struggles but in a way that isn't overwhelming for the reader because it is very emotionally difficult, but she uses humor to help you understand what's going on in her life, and it's just beautiful. She does such a great job. In that vein, I also have to re recommend Samantha Irby's uh, essay collections, uh, Meaty and uh, we'll ne We're Never Meeting in Real Life. Her essay collections talk about her life as a 30-something and going forward through the decade. And if you read both of them, you can actually follow her life almost through, like, through the decade of her 30s. And she struggles with Crohn's disease, um, which is an inflammation of the entire digestive tract and you get uh, severe diarrhea and a lot of problems that are really gross to talk about. And as someone who has a gastrointestinal struggle with autoimmune disease, um, I personally related to this in so many ways. You just learn to talk about your bowels way more openly than people typically would and that's what you get in these books. She has hilarious stories that are actually pretty horrible if you think about them but they're told in such a funny way and the audiobooks are just perfection. The humor and timing is uh, so wonderful. She she does describe things very in detail so if you have a sensitive nature and do not want to know that many details about a person's sex life and uh, uh, digestive system that may not be the books for you, but they're really funny. And so if you really connect with her on the first couple essays, I would highly recommend that you just go forth. But if you don't, then just, just stop reading because it probably won't work for you. But I really love them, so. <laughs> I'm actually gonna do something a little weird and recommend one section from this book. And that is The Sword of Kings by C.E. Morgan. In here, there's a section where Almond's mother, where Al we learn more about Almond, who's one of the characters in the book, and his background, and we learn more about his mom. His mom has a form of lupus but she can't figure out what's wrong with her. And I really had never seen a struggle to find a cure in a novel before, or a really struggle what, what she has. And the thing is, is that most of the time when we hear stories from the medical community, as you search around, it might be even be years, but eventually you'll get a diagnosis and you'll go forward now that you know what it is. But the fact is that many people who have autoimmune diseases do not know what it is. And that is because there's very little research 
insert rant about sexism here and patriarchy and medical community here. Thank you. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so you just don't know. And so she, the book talks about that. It talks about how they tried to find the money for her to go to a doctor. She finally went to a doctor and he told her that he knew she had some form of, probably some form of lupus, but he couldn't diagnose her because her symptoms weren't bad enough. And even if she was diagnosed, she probably wouldn't get disability unless fighting the courts, which also costs money. And then it's just because autoimmune diseases aren't considered as disabling enough to give you disability. And this is a reality that I know many people, I, I am part of chronic illness forums and different things, many people have talked about their fights to be able to get disability for their autoimmune diseases and ev other chronic illnesses, and they can't because they're not considered severe enough. And um, it's a really a big problem, and I'd never seen that actually portrayed in a novel. And it was just very, it was very difficult to read. I had to put the book down and step away for almost, a, I think, like a half a week, week because it was just so true. And I will say that actually she probably would have had to find the money to go to five, four or five doctors before any doctor actually told her that because doctors just aren't prepared or trained for autoimmune diseases um, that are any more complicated than an upfront case, really, oftentimes. And yeah, it's a very difficult situation. And I just really admired that C.E. Morgan portrayed that in this book. Now, the rest of the book, take it or leave it but I really appreciated that section and so I'm going to be keeping this book just so I can reread that section um, at times and recommend it to people and it's just really it's really heartbreaking yeah I'm just gonna put it down now because I don't have anything else I don't have anything else to say but some books are so personal it's very difficult to talk about them and that would definitely be one of them speaking of personal books two books on my TBR is Abby Norman's uh, Ask Me About My Uterus, A Quest to Make the Doctors Believe in Women's Pain. And I have PCOS and endometriosis, and so I definitely relate to this book. I've not been able to read it yet because I'm, I know I'm just going to sob my eyes out because I find it very difficult to read stuff about things that I have and how, you know, doctors ignore women's pain and a bunch of different things. And yeah, I, I do want to read this but I'm just gonna have to find the right headspace. I don't know when that's gonna become, but I'm not gonna force it on myself because I think that'll be very difficult. So yeah, I'm glad that people are finally writing about this. I know Hilary Mantel wrote a memoir about this. That's also somewhere on my TBR, but this is one of a woman in my generation and we still experience this, even though it's still supposed to be more well known. And I don't know, I just, yeah. It also runs in my family. And so having personally experienced all of that, it's like, okay, I need, I need to prep to read about my family's experience and my experience. I'm looking forward to this one. It just may not happen right now. I know Jacqueline over at Six Minutes From Me reviewed this on her blog and I really appreciated her take on it. So if you want a more detailed review of someone who's actually read it, definitely go check out um, her review there. Another book I'm looking forward to reading is Sick, um, a memoir by Cor Porakista Kapoor. And this is a book about her struggle with advanced Lyme disease. Sammy and I know a few people who have neurological Lyme disease and trying to find clinics that will treat them. Lyme is still not treated as a real disease by many doctors, at least not a severe disease. So I'm very interested to read her story behind it because I feel like people with Lyme disease are often just ignored or not taken seriously. So I really appreciate that she's finally writing about it. I'm very much looking forward to reading this and learning more about Lyme disease and what it entails. We'll see what happens. We'll see how we do with this and I think it'll be very beautiful. It's one of my most anticipated books of the summer. So those are the books that I would recommend or on my TBR and there was a lot there and a lot of feelings there obviously um, but I think that's the important part of reading books about people from different walks of life is understanding those feelings, understanding where they're coming from and I know I would love it if a lot more people knew what diseases were when I talked about them or the different struggles that I have and I wouldn't have to explain them in detail and, and you know that would be great. That would be wonderful. So here's to reading more books by people with chronic illnesses. I hope you find what you're looking for. I've seen other recommendations. I'm going to link the Goodreads page for this challenge down below. There have been so many wonderful recommendations uh, that I, books I'd never even heard of. So I think that's great. So thank you so much for watching and I guess I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.